Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and in this DCS F18C Hornet video, we'll be taking a look at the basics of operation of the new targeting pod system coming for the Hornet in the next big update, and that's the AT FLIR. Now, just like the Lightning, we have uh, modes for both air to ground and air to air. Uh, we'll start with air to ground. So let's go to air to ground master mode. And here on the stores page, we can see we have AT FLIR uh, mounted on the left chin station. And on the inner left wing station, I have that empty to give the uh, FLIR as much uh, ability to look around as possible. Coming down, let's make sure that the uh, FLIR switch is in the on position. And also while we're down here, let's set the uh, laser target designation ranging switch to arm as well. We'll zoom into the uh, right DDI. We'll go to the TAC page, Tactical, and we'll select FLIR from the top. So just like the lightning pod, we want to make sure that we assign the uh, TDC uh, to this display so we can start slowing around and using the TDC or control. And to do that, because the display is on the right DDI, we'll go right on the sensor control switch. And we did that. We have a diamond in the corner up here indicating that the TDC is assigned to it. Now, if we had, you know, for instance, had the FLIR on the left side and we wanted to assign the TDC to it, we go uh, left on the sensor control switch. So as you can see, there's a lot of information on this display. So uh, let's start here in the top left corner and work our way around. Uh, first, we have OPR for operate. Uh, naturally, the uh, system is up and operating pretty straightforward. Uh, next to that is our field of view indication. So we have wide field of view, medium field of view, and narrow field of view, which as you can see, there's actually three field of view rather than just two uh, from the lightning pod. Uh, below that, we have our zoom function, which can either be 1x or 2x but zoom does not uh, function in the wide. It only functions in medium and narrow. So here in medium field of view, we can uh, select the zoom by either the OSBs here, or we can use the uh, elevation control on the throttle to adjust it. And also when you're using this control, you can also uh, sequentially go through not just the zooms, but also the field of view. So I continue to zoom down now we go into the narrow one, and then narrow two, and then back through all the way out to wide. Below that, we have our north arrow. And as you may recall, the north arrow is not in relation to the nose of our aircraft, but rather the position of where the targeting pod is looking. So in this case, we have the targeting pod looking at uh, the airfield at Abba Musa. And you can see a little arrow right here pointing uh, up and to the left. So north in this relation is up this way. Uh, right next to it is the uh, point indication of where the pod is looking. So ahead and to the left, up in the uh, top center, we have the camera type. Right now we're in the TV camera. We can select the OSB. We can go to the IR infrared. Right now we're in white hot. Uh, coming down here at the bottom, we can go to black hot. Go back to the TV for now. And below that, we have our azimuth indication of where the pod is looking in azimuth. In this case, 41 degrees to the left, which is down here, again, at Abba Musa. Below that, we have uh, laser arm, or L, L arm, in case the laser is armed, because we had set it up here a little bit earlier. To the right of that, we, if we want, we can disable the reticles, declutter it a bit. And of course, uh, in the corner, we have our diamond for uh, TDC assignment. And below that is the coordinate display. Uh, in this case, it's full coordinates of lat long, elevation, and grid. But as we'll see here in just a little bit, we can cut this down if we wish. To the right of that is our trigger function, which allows us to manually fire the laser while holding the trigger on the control stick. And you'd usually just use this when you're uh, manually designating a target for an offboard entity. Take that off for now. Uh, below is our distance to the target. In this case, again, the airfield at Abamusa at 17.9 miles. Below that is our laser uh, spot tracker code, 1688. And below that is the laser target designator and ranger, which is also at 1688. We can press the OC button and we can adjust these as we wish. So if we want to adjust the code for the LTDC, so we click on that, say 1687, enter. And now we have that value changed. Uh, the very bottom uh, setup. The two big items here, one is the uh, grayscale allows you to better tune uh, the picture. 
But as I just mentioned earlier, we can also adjust the coordinate display. So right now we're in all. We can go just lat long and elevation. Just the grid. Remove it entirely. And then back to all again. Let's come out of setup. Uh, naturally, we have our altitude. We have our declutter function, which also gets rid of the um, uh, information at the very bottom, as well as the horizon line and the velocity vector. Come this back. Our LST, uh, once we're, we have the pod looking where we want and we have the uh, code set in, we can hit the LST to automatically search for that uh, PRF. Uh, coming over, we have our airspeed and mock. Now on the left side, again, we have our zoom function and we have a focus function, which is really not applicable for the simulation. Uh, in the center, we have our reticles. We have our meter stick. So from one end to the other across the ground line, that's 597 meters. And in the very center, you see another uh, triangle with a two, and that's the indicator for waypoint two, which we're looking at right now. Now depressing the TDC switch, We'll set INR, and at this point now we can slew our camera in INR. And notice here at the bottom, we see the mode of INR, inertial. As I go back and forth, you can also see the meter stick adjust as well, as well as the coordinates. Let's zoom in a bit. Let's go back to the IR for a second. Now we're in IR, we also have the ALG or automatic level and gain, which I'll try to do its best to give you the best picture, but sometimes it doesn't do a really good job. So what we can also do is you can disable that by unboxing it and select uh, manually uh, level and gain here. And this switches these two now to your level and gain controls. So I can adjust the gain, adjust the level, and it's also worth noting, this is the uh, current version of the uh, FLIR uh, imaging. I work on a new system right now, which is going to be far, far superior. Let's come back out, back out the TV. Yeah, so that's INR mode. So with the display on the uh, right TDI, we'll go right on the sensor control switch again, and this will put us into scene mode. You can think of scene mode much like area mode from the lightning pod. And as we slew it, note that it goes into INR. When we release the slew, it goes back into a scene mode again where it's tracking that scene. You can also see it by the little uh, markers on the end of the lines disappear when you're in INR mode. Now the cool thing about this is unlike area mode in the lightning, uh, once you set up a scene, you can actually still slew the camera around. You're not locked at that point. Uh, finally, let's go uh, right one more time on the sensor control switch. And now we go into auto mode, which again is very analogous to point mode in the lightning pod. And just like the lightning pod, it is a non-actionable mode. So once uh, you enter auto mode, it's locked to that position. But if you wanted to uh, quickly, say, move the camera from that, you can depress and hold the TDC switch until you get that plus sign in the middle there move that to a different location, say these barracks over here, go sensor control switch to the right again, and it moves the camera to that location in INR mode. So that's a little overview of using the AT FLIR in air to ground. Now let's take a look at it in air to air. So the uh, air-to-air -air mode for the AT FLIR is uh, very similar to what we had with Lightning Pod. So the first thing we'll do is we'll select an air-to-air -air weapon like an AMRAM to bring up the air-to-air -air master mode automatically. You can see now that we have the AT FLIR on the left DDI. Let's select the slave BST or boresight mode and we'll go ahead and enable those reticles. So we can see a target out there ahead of us, a little off to the left. I will fly now to bring the velocity vector on the HUD uh, near that target visually. And we can see it now on the display. So we're in wide field of view. Let's bring this in just a little bit to medium by going left on sensor control switch to sign the TDC. I hit the button and we'll line it up and we'll go left again on sensor control switch to initiate a FLIR track. And you can see up on the HUD now, we have an F below the TD box indicating that the FLIR is tracking that target. So pretty straightforward and pretty simple. 
Uh, next, let's take a look at a launch and steering or an LNS track. So we have a target over here to the right. We'll go undesignate key to break this lock. And let's lock this guy up now. We'll press LNS to slave the FLIR pod to that radar lock target. Sensor control switch to the left to assign the TDC to the FLIR. Let's go narrow. And sensor control switch one more time to the left to initiate a FLIR track. And there it is. So now both the radar and the FLIR are tracking the same target. And that's why you see a C now below the TD box, indicating that the two are correlated. So folks, I very much hope you enjoyed this uh, look at the new features for the AT FLIR, both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground. And I will see you next time. Thanks.